Hello everyone. I'd like to share a project with you today on how to make a secure lockbox for your trail cameras. I use trail cameras um, a lot since uh, I'm not able to get up to the property I hunt as much as I'd like to. So I place four to five cameras um, throughout the property to see where the deer movement are, what deer are on the property. And um, so it, to me it's a valuable tool. Now with the trail cameras, you know, they, they range anywhere from $50 to a couple of hundred dollars, depending upon what version that you get. And unfortunately, um, other people can you know, grab your camera if it's not secured properly out in the field. If someone's trespassing on your property and they see that there's a trail cam and their picture was taken, they're more likely going to take the camera as not to be found out that, you know, they were on your property. Uh, and with the price of cameras, you know, depending on which ones you get, you know, I've had a couple stolen, unfortunately. So I try and find a way to secure it so that when they are out in the field and I'm not there and somebody does pass by, um, it'll be very difficult for them to just, you know, untie it from a tree and, and take off with it. So what I have here is just a uh, secure box that I uh, was able to make out of a $7 uh, electrical box from the home center and the camera is able to fit in there securely and uh, I'm able to secure it to the tree and not worry about whether or not somebody's going to walk off with it but for a couple of hours of work seven dollars in uh, materials I'm able to lock up my camera and know that it'll be there the next time I come to the field so let's go to the shop and I'll show you how I built this secure box for my trail cam camera. So as you can see, there's not many things that's um, required to complete this project. First thing is, is you, uh, you have your camera, and then what you're trying to do is find an electrical box that matches its depth, width, and height so that it'll slide in there uh, relatively easy. Now I was able to find a air conditioner disconnect box at my local home center for about seven bucks. Uh, it wasn't much more than that. So this particular box, which is made for outside, uh, is pretty close uh, in the depth and the height uh, of my camera. It's pretty simple. We're going to take the lid off. Then all we're going to do is we're going to remove the internal components of this box and when we do the camera should fit in there and then once the uh, the camera is uh, within the box we'll go ahead and mark our top and drill or cut out holes uh, to match the lenses and the flash of the camera itself and the only thing I plan on doing to uh, to cut the top with is my uh, grinder I've got a couple of disc metal cutting disc here that we'll use to cut out the appropriate hole and that should be a relatively um, easy and cheap uh, secure box uh, for something that I paid a hundred dollars for. Now that I've got the internal components of the disconnect box uh, emptied out, the camera fits in there very nicely. But what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and fill in the sides with um, some foam that I have. And what that'll do is that'll allow me to put the camera in there at the same spot every time um, it goes in there to line up with the holes that we'll cut in here. Because um, if I don't, then the camera can slide over one way or the other. And so by putting this, the foam in here, one, it kind of gives it a little bit of a cush, uh, cushion uh, as I'm transporting it back and forth to the field. It's not rattling. At the same time, it'll give me perfect alignment every time I put the camera into the box. 
So let me go ahead and cut some pieces of foam to slide in here like so, and then we'll glue that in there and uh, go on to the next step. There you go. So now the camera's in there, we can move it around. And every time I place the camera within the, uh, the box itself, when I go to cut my holes, it'll line up perfectly So the next every time. step is to line up where we're going to cut out for the flash, the sensor, uh, and the lens. I'm not going to cut out this bottom section here as that gives me the number of pictures and, what's and uh, the timing and so forth. I'm only concerned with uh, what's needed to operate the camera itself, not the, uh, sorry, I'm only concerned with what's needed for the camera to function, not the operation controls. Uh, I want that locked up. So uh, let's go ahead and get this lined up and then we can go ahead and uh, cut the appropriate holes. So what I've done now is I've marked the beginning of the, of the camera here, which is where the flash is. And then I've also marked down here, which is where the lens is. And all I'm going to do is only cut off of the top what is needed uh, for the camera itself. So when we come to the top here, I'll mark this to come up even with, with the lens or with the flash on either side. So when I go to put the, the top on and line it up, then I know that this is the section that I need to cut. Now there is a locking mechanism down here eventually where I'll put a lock. So I need to make sure that this is connected here and then I'll mark it on here so that it lines up. And I got it down there too far. So let me bring it up just a little bit so I know where that is. And so now what I'll do is I'll connect the lines and that'll be where I need to cut out the box. So let me show you, let me connect the lines and show you where that looks. Okay, so now I've taken my lines, I've transferred them onto the lid, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this out uh, with my grinder, and try and cut this as square as I can, and as cleanly as I can, and we should be in business. So let me take this outside, and uh, take the grinder to it, and go ahead and, and cut out this opening. So I've taken the the lid itself, uh, clamped it into a vise, which is clamped to my bench, and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut out the opening.
So now that we've got the lid um, cut, let's check the fit, make sure it's gonna fit okay. So the camera with the, with the uh, padding in there, fits in there snugly, it's not gonna move. It'll line up every time. So place the lid in here, slide it down. And then we'll go ahead and put the lock down at the bottom and then we'll lock it up. And there we have it. So the only thing that's left to do is to give it a coat of paint. Now you're probably wondering how I plan on securing this to the tree. Well, as you can see on the back, um, there are already pre-drilled holes and all I plan on doing is running uh, lag bolts through uh, the holes here securing it to the tree and depending upon the size of the tree I can either put two vertically or horizontally um, or I can you know just put uh, two depending upon the, the size of the tree but the holes are already there the lag bolts uh, will secure it there's a lock in the front so this should be pretty secure from uh, human or beast, whatever's out there. Okay, um, I just got a light coat of uh, paint on this and then I went ahead and uh, flattened out the two sides. I cut away a little bit of a notch uh, because that was quite um, protruding out there. And then I uh, left the bottom half and then I just put it on uh, my vise and I hammered it until it was flat. Now to get this to look like it was um, without these little divots in it, I put some outdoor uh, tape on it and just taped over top of it so it looks pretty clean. So let's put this together real quick. Uh, we've got our top foam. Then we have our two side pieces. And I was going to glue these in to keep them in, but um, it's, it's actually not that big of a deal just to slide them in as such and just move it to the side. Okay, so that fits in there pretty tight. And then we take the top. Get it in there. And there we have it. Nice and clean. And then uh, I'll probably camouflage this up a little bit, but let me go hang it up on a tree so you can see what it looks like fully installed.